In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of the uh, projection operator and give a simple example. Um, reminder, the playlist for all the videos is um, at the website digital-university.org. Now, let's just take a look at a very simple situation. Say we have two vectors here, and we ask ourselves, if we're going along here, here's the length of vector B, if we're right here, what point on vector A is closest to this point? And of course, we all know the answer to that. It's the perpendicular distance from here to vector A. And this distance from here to here is the projection of vector B under vector A. So we just call that the projection vector P. And P is equal to, then, some scalar times the vector A. Now, what's the magnitude of this scalar? Well, of course, we could say it would just be the magnitude of B times the cosine of this angle here. We want to answer that same question um, from a vector point of view. So this vector right here, if this is vector P, this is vector B, the vector that points in this direction is B minus P. P is in this direction, B is in this direction, B minus P is in this direction. We have a vector here we subtracted this component from the component we have left is this component. And we know that this vector right here is orthogonal to our vector A. And when we take, when we say they're orthogonal, that means that their inner product or their dot product is zero. And remember when we have two vectors uh, say x and y in three-dimensional space. This works for any dimension, obviously, but a vector x and a vector y. When we take the dot product of them, it is the transpose of x times y. So we write this as a row vector times the column vector y, or its components. And then just go ahead and multiply this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this. So what we'll have here then is we want to take the dot product, or the inner product, of vector a with b minus p. Take this dot product. Vector a with b minus p. So that would be a transpose times b minus p. They're orthogonal, so that equals 0. Or p, that's just some scalar times a. So we could write the equation like this. All right, now what we can do is multiply through by A transpose, and we will have A transpose B minus C A transpose A equals 0. Now, A transpose A, this is just taking the inner product of vector A with itself. So that's just the magnitude of vector A, or actually it's the magnitude squared of vector A. The point is that this is just a number. so. This scalar right here, we could say, is just equal to C 
equals this a transpose times b divided by this. Realizing this is just a number. It's the magnitude of vector a squared. We're taking the inner product of vector a with itself. Now, the projection p, that is equal to the scalar times vector a, or we could say vector a times the scalar. We can write it either way. So now, we can use this value for c, and we would have that that projection vector p equals vector a times c. Like this. And this right here is called the projection operator. This is what vector b gets multiplied by. This vector b is multiplied by this to give the projection vector p. And we say that yes, let's just write this out, the projection vector p is a a transpose divided by a transpose a. Now, if this is a vector, well, this is just a number. It's just the magnitude of vector a squared. And that means that this must be a vector. And indeed it is. Remember how this works now. Say we have two vectors, x and y. And again, if we take their inner product, we take the transpose of x times y. So this is written as a row times a column, then just multiply across and add. But instead, if we have a column vector times a row vector, that gives a matrix. Because this is x1 times this column plus x2 times that column, plus x3 times that column. So a row vector times a column vector, that's just dot product, that's just inner product. But if we switch the order of these, we have a column vector and a row vector, that gives a matrix. And if we have a situation like here, where we have a vector a. I'm just showing these with three components. This works in no matter what dimension we're dealing with, no matter how many components we have. Here's a. Here's a transpose. The column times the row. That's a times a transpose gives, again, the matrix. a1 times that first column plus a2 times that first column, plus a3 times that first column. Not only is this a matrix, but look if we look at it closely, we'll see it is a symmetrical matrix. Here we have the diagonal elements, a1 squared, a2 squared, a3 squared, but the off diagonals are equal to each other. Here we have a1 and a2 times each other. Same thing here. a1 and a3 a1 and a3, a2, a3, a2, a3. So not only is this a vector, but it is a symmetrical vector. Now, I'm showing these here with uh, dealing with square matrices. In the future videos, when we deal with overdetermined systems, our matrix won't be squares, but the same principles will still apply. So. This is a vector. This is just a number. And this is called the projection matrix. 
because it is this quantity right here that the vector b is multiplied by to get its projection onto vector a. And in the other videos, we're going to deal with situations where we have a vector, but it won't be projected onto just a single vector. We'll be projecting it onto a subspace, a combination of many different vectors. But the principle is exactly the same as what we just saw here in our um, simple example. Now, to get a feel as to how these work out, um, we should do an example. See, the video is getting a little bit long. Let's do that in the next video. We have now, here's what we need to remember for the next video. We're doing exactly the same thing, except we're going to have numbers. We want to know then, what is C? This is how we determine that. C is the scale that vector A has to be multiplied by to get this projection. And we want to know what is the projection matrix. So we want to remember this, this, and this. These three things. So keep those in mind. And what we'll do in the next video, we'll have um, a vector, say, A, that equals 2, 4, 3. And we will have a vector B, 1, 2, 3. And we'll go ahead and take the projection of vector B onto vector A. We'll find the projection matrix, and we'll go through the whole nine yards. But let's do that in the next video. This video is getting a little bit long. But remember what we did here is we're going to do exactly the same thing in the next video, except instead of having just formulas, we're going to have a specific example that we're going to work with.